Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 7, Lesson 1, Graphing Systems of Equations. After this lesson, you need to be able to determine the number of solutions of a system of linear equations, solve systems of equations by graphing, solve linear equations by graphing systems of equations, and use graphing calculators to solve systems of equations. Let's learn graphs of systems of equations. First, a set of two or more equations with the same variables is called a system of equations. An ordered pair that's the solution of both equations is the solution of the system. And a system of two linear equations can have one solution, an infinite number of solutions, or no solution at all. Some other words that we can use to describe our system. If a system of equations is consistent, then at least one ordered pair will make both equations true. Within those consistent systems, we can say that it is independent if there's exactly one solution. The graphs will intersect at exactly one point. Or we could say that the systems are dependent, and that is when you're going to have your infinite number of solutions. The graphs of both lines will be in the exact same place, so really they're just the same line. What it's going to look like is one line will be on top of the other. So instead of one coordinate that will work, there's going to be an unlimited number of coordinates that work for both equations. And then finally, if the graphs do not intersect at all, it is considered an inconsistent system. There will be no coordinate that works for both equations. And we would see this by the graphs being parallel. Example one, consistent systems. Use the graph to determine the number of solutions the system has, then state whether the system of equations is consistent or inconsistent, and if it's independent or dependent. So first, we're gonna look at the graph and we're gonna see that these two graphs intersect at this point right here. That is the solution to this graph. So the solution, the coordinate that would work in both lines at the same time would be at that point. And then since the graphs intersect at one point, there's exactly one solution. So this system would be consistent. And because there's one solution, it is independent. Example two, inconsistent systems. Use the graph to determine the number of solutions the system has, then state whether it's consistent or inconsistent and independent or dependent. Here we can see the graphs are parallel. These graphs will never intersect and therefore they're never gonna have a point of intersection. So there will not be a solution. So this system is inconsistent. There will be no solution. Check your understanding. Determine whether each graph shows a system that's consistent or inconsistent, and if it's independent or dependent. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. For the first one, we have some parallel lines again. This is an inconsistent system. And our second one, it intersects at one point. So it is consistent and independent. Example three, number of solutions, equations, and slope intercept form. Determine the number of solutions the system has, then state whether the system of equations is consistent or inconsistent, and if it's independent or dependent. Here, we are just given the equations, not the graph. We could use some graphing software like Desmos to see what these look like to help us out, but we can tell just from the equations. So here we can see the slopes. Because the slopes are the same, we can see they're both six. And then the y-intercepts are different, one's at 10, one's at four. These lines are parallel. So if you see the same slope, but different y-intercepts, you're gonna have parallel lines. So this system would have no solution. And because there's no solution, this system would be inconsistent. Check your understanding. Determine the number of solutions the system has, given these two equations. As a bit of help for you, if we change that second equation into slope-intercept form, it would look like this. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. This system has one solution. We can tell the slopes are different, so they're going to intersect somewhere. It would have one solution. This system would be consistent and independent. Example four, number of solutions, equations in standard form. Determine the number of solutions the system has, then state whether the system of equations is consistent or inconsistent, and if it's independent or dependent. With equations, the quickest way to tell if your graphs are going to intersect is to convert them to slope intercept form. So you can check the slopes. If they have different slopes, they're going to intersect. Here though, we can't necessarily tell. So let's change them into slope intercept form. To do this, we're going to solve the equation for y. So I would do that by adding 6x to both sides. Then I would end up with 6x plus 16. To get y by itself, I would have to divide both sides by four. And then finally, I would end up with y equals three over two x plus four. For the other equation, 
I'm going to still get y by itself. So here I would need to subtract 9x from both sides, then divide both sides by negative 6, and I would end up with y equals 3 over 2x plus 4. Here, because the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same, this is the same line. So we graphed one, the other one would be right in the same place. Because these graphs are the same, there's infinitely many places where they are touching each other, so therefore this system is consistent and dependent. Check your understanding. Determine the number of solutions this system has. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said this one has no solution. If I put these into slope-intercept form, I could end up with, I'm just going to show moving x to the other side first. So I'd have negative 4x plus 16, dividing both sides by negative 8. I'd end up with y is equal to negative 4 divided by negative 8 would reduce to 1 half. x positive 16 divided by negative 8 would be negative 2. If I do the same thing to the other side, I'd end up with negative 12y equals negative 6x plus 5. Dividing both sides by negative 12, I'd end up with y equals negative 6 divided by negative 12 is 1 half. So right away I can see they have the same slope. If they're going to have a solution, the y-intercepts would have to be the same, but this one is not at negative 2, it is at negative 5 twelfths. So these have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, so this has no solution. Let's learn. Solving systems of equations by graphing. You can solve a system of equations by graphing each equation carefully on the same coordinate plane. Every point on one line represents the solution of that equation. So in this blue line here, every single point on this line would be true for this top equation. The same goes for every point on the second line. So every point on this orange line would work for x and y of this second equation. So if we want a solution to a system where there's more than one line at the same time, the only place that's going to work on both lines at the same time is where they intersect. So the solution is going to be where those two points intersect. So here, the solution of this system is negative 1, 3, because that's the point where they intersect. And again, that's because that point is on both lines at the same time. And in most real-world situations, that point will also represent the time where both situations are equal to each other. So that solution is going to be very important for us to be able to find going forward. Example 5. Solve a system by graphing. Graph the system and determine the number of solutions it has. If it has one solution, determine its coordinates. So we're given two lines here written in slope-intercept form, which is our good form for graphing. So y equals negative 2x plus 14. Just as a reminder of how to graph a line, you're going to start at the y-intercept, which is at the end. So up 14 and put a point. Then from that point, you're going to do what the slope says, which remember was m. As a fraction, this would be saying go down 2 over 1. From that point, I'm going to go down 2 over 1. Now, I could have just went down two squares and over one. I wanted to actually show going down two spaces. This is counting by two and counting by two again. So down two over one would be there. It's going to start making a line. If I keep going that same pattern, I could use a straight edge and see my line would be going like this. Then I could do the same thing with y equals three fifths x plus one. So it's plus one is right here. And it's going up three over five. So up one, two, three over one, two, three, four, five it would be right here. I can see right now that is going to be the place where they intersect. So what is that coordinate? They appear to intersect at the point of 5, here's 5, and 4. So that's our prediction for our solution. We can check by plugging that coordinate in for x and y in the equations to see if they're true. So if I plug in 4 is y and x is 5, is that true? Let's see. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10, plus 14 is 4. That works. If I were to plug in 5, do I get 4 here? 3 fifths of 5 is 3, plus 1 is 4. Also works there. So 5, 4 would be the solution to this system. Check your understanding. Graph the system of equations to find the solution. It may be helpful to change those two standard form equations into slope-intercept form first. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said that the solution is 0, 2. 
to get that, first I'm going to change these into slope intercept form. So I would have to subtract 3x and then divide by 5, and I would end up with y equals negative 3x divided by 5, and then 10 divided by 5 would be 2. So my first equation, negative 3 fits x plus 2. And then same with this one, I would end up with y equals negative 1 fifth x plus 2. So right away, they both start at 2. I can tell right away that's where it's going to intersect. If I had finished graphing these, down 3 over 5 would be around here, going something like that. And negative 1 fifth x plus 2, still starting in that same spot, it would be somewhere like this, where they intersect at 0, 2. Example 6. Graph and solve a system of equation. Graph the system and determine the number of solutions that it has. If it has one solution, determine its coordinates. So here, again, we have two things in standard form. In the last check, those equations didn't work very well to use the x and y coordinates, which can be helpful when it's in standard form. Another way to graph in standard form is to figure out if x was gone, what would y equal? So if x was 0, y must be 6 in order to do 2 times 6 equals 12. So my y-intercept would be 6. Then if I pretend y isn't there, negative 3 times what is 12? That must be negative 4. So this first line would go through those two points. And we'll keep going. For the next one, I'm going to do the same thing. So if x isn't there, then y would have to be negative 2. Then if y wasn't there, this one's a little odd, but x would be 8 divided by 6, which is 1 and 1 third. So it's going to be about 1 and 1 third. It's a little hard to see on this one, but if we were to graph these and graph them correctly, we would see they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts. So these lines are parallel, and since they don't intersect, this has no solution. For this example and for the previous examples, we also can use the help of graphing calculators such as Desmos to see what the graph looks like and help us determine where the solution is. So for this example, I have our two equations typed in. I can see that they are parallel. And as I keep zooming out, I'm just going to double check that they're never crossing. It does happen where you get slopes that are very close together. However, as we zoom out, we'll be able to find a place where they intersect. The same goes with if they happen to be the same line. The same thing can happen if your lines are too close together. You might think they are the same line. So here I took the same one and I just changed this to negative five. If you look where I'm zoomed right now, it looks like the two lines might be on top of each other in the same spot. And I can tell just by turning one and off. But if I zoom in, I can see they're actually not the same line, that they are parallel. If they were the same line, then no matter how much I zoom in, I can see they're still in the same spot. So Desmos can help you to find a place whether they are parallel, the same line, or if they're going to have a place of intersection. We can also use graphing to solve linear equations. So our key concept here is using systems to solve linear equations. This is going to have three steps. One, you're going to write a system of equations by setting each side of the equal sign, each expression equal to y. Then you're going to graph both new lines and then find the intersection. Example eight. Use a system to solve a linear equation. So use a system of equations to solve negative 6x plus 8 equals negative 4. Now, this method might take a little bit longer to do some of these two-step equations. However, if you have more complicated equations with variables on both sides, this method can be a lot quicker to find your solution. So first, let's write a system. We're going to set each side of that equation equal to y. So y equals negative 6x plus 8, and y equals negative 4. Next, we're going to graph the system, and then we'll find where they intersect. To do this one, let's head over to Desmos. In Desmos, I have our two equations typed in. Now we're going to look at where they intersect. So I'm going to just click on it. A point will show up, and you can click on it so the coordinate stays. Our solution here is at 2, negative 4. Now, what you're solving for is the x value. So what you're actually just going to look at is that first value. So x would be 2. So we found that intersection at 2, negative 4, and our solution was the x-coordinate, which is just 2. So our solution to this would be x equals 2. Last, we're going to check our solution by plugging in what we got, which is 2, back into the equation. So if I plug in 2, I end up with negative 6 times 2, which is negative 12, plus 8. Does that equal negative 4? Yes, negative 4 equals negative 4. So 2 is our correct answer. Check your understanding. 
use a system of equations and your graphing calculator, so Desmos, to solve this linear equation. Round to the nearest hundredth, two decimal places, if necessary. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said x was equal to negative 2.13. In Desmos, I set y equal to each side of the equal sign. Then we're just going to find where they intersect, which is at negative 2.133. I only care about that x coordinate, so negative 2.13. And it said round to the nearest hundredth, so two decimal places. Example 10. Write and solve a system of equations. Our real context here is business. Denzel is starting a food truck business to sell gourmet grilled cheese sandwiches. He has spent $34,000 on the truck, equipment, permits, and other startup costs. Each sandwich costs about $1.32 to make, and he sells them for $7. How many sandwiches does Denzel need to sell to start earning a profit? So let's let X equal the number of sandwiches he sold, and Y be his total cost or revenue. So his total cost is going to be $1.32 per sandwich, that's what he has to spend, plus the $34,000 that he spent to begin with. His revenue is going to be $7 per sandwich. Now, to figure out how many he needs to sell, we're going to graph this system. So let's use our graphing calculator. In Desmos, I have our two equations typed in. It looks like only one of them showed up, but this y-intercept is at 34,000. So I'm going to need to zoom out quite a bit in order to find it. Now I can see both graphs. I'm going to look where are they intersecting. And at their intersection, x is 5,985.9 y 41,901.4. So the solution to the system was approximately 5,985.92 and 41,901.41. What this would mean that after Denzel has sold 5,986 sandwiches, we just rounded up, then he will begin to earn a profit. So it took him almost 6,000 sandwiches to earn a profit, but that makes sense because he's not selling them for that much and he had to make up $34,000 in costs.